great things to tell us today about his, uh, his topic. I would like to introduce to you Stu Hobson. Stu is going to be talking to us about the history of the flag. Stu, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you, I appreciate that. Can you all hear me? Is that good? Okay. Um, it is truly my honor to be here in front of all you folks. Uh, I can't even put it into words what it means to, to be able to stand here and, and, and be a part of this, this community that you guys have here at Kilroy Coffee. It uh, brings me honor every time I come to the museum. Uh, I also want to thank all the volunteers for being here and setting us up every month because they, they do a great job. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been an Ampa police officer for about 19 years. I've uh, been a school resource officer for 16, and being a school resource officer has kind of led me here. Uh, I started my school resource officer career as an elementary uh, officer, and while I was in uh, those classrooms talking with those kids, I would be there in the morning and um, be asked by the principal to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I started to notice that uh, some of the kids in the classroom would would stand up, but they really didn't do it because they wanted to. They were doing it because their principal was telling them to, and they knew the words of the Pledge of Allegiance, but they didn't understand what it meant. And so they were just reciting these words out of pure memory. And, and that, that struck me, and, and I was a little bit saddened by that. Um, and so I started doing a little bit of research and, and figuring out about the Pledge of Allegiance and the American flag and thought, you know what, maybe these kids don't understand what that symbol is and, and what those words mean. And if, if somebody were to tell them what uh, the Pledge of Allegiance is about and they understood a little bit more about the flag, they would appreciate it a little bit more. And, and my goal was to start educating these folks, these kids, in the hopes that someday they would, when they had the opportunity to stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance or sing the National Anthem, they did it because they wanted to and because they felt proud. Uh, and they, they recognized what it meant. And so uh, that was 2001. Uh, I've been doing it in schools and churches and in the community ever since, uh, right here at the Warhawk Air Museum as well as part of the, uh, you know, some of the bridging the generations uh, groups that come in. Um, I've done this presentation here before, so if you've already seen this, I apologize. I guess you get to sit through it again. So, you need to hold the mic just a little bit. Closer. A little bit higher? How about that? Better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These people are hard to hear. Okay. Well, that's probably good. They don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> so, um, the other side to this presentation is, uh, for you, you didn't hear me, my, my goal is to educate kids on uh, the history of the pledge and the flag so that they have a better understanding and, and want to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, the other side is to make sure that folks like yourselves are appreciated. I know uh, many Americans take their freedom for granted, uh, and you guys have provided us with that freedom day in and day out, and will continue to do so, and it's very important that our veterans are appreciated. In my mind, every day is Veterans Day, and so it's kind of a two-part uh, presentation that I, that I do this, and so, um, and I've also had the very good fortune of, of meeting many uh, of you veterans. Bill and Bull and, and Andy have come to Nampa High and my other class, my other schools and, and helped do some presentations. So uh, this presentation I'm gonna do for you today, uh, I usually take about an hour and a half to do, for, you know, uh, just over an hour, somewhere between an hour, hour and a half. I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through this and leave out some of the activities that we do in the classroom and, and just kind of give you some of that information, okay? So, I'm um, going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance and the history of the Pledge of Allegiance. So, the Pledge of Allegiance was originally written in 1892 by a Baptist minister named Francis Bellamy. He was asked to put together a speech for a Columbus Day ceremony for the Boston, Massachusetts public schools. And so he sat down and he wrote a speech. And this is what he wrote. He wrote, I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now you probably recognize a lot of that. Uh, that was the original speech. 
He gave that speech in 1892 on Columbus Day, and it literally just really caught fire. Or in, in our, in the kids' uh, vernacular for today, it went viral. If you could, if you could do go, go viral in 1892, that's what happened. It really was very, very popular, and it started spreading all across the country, um, being said before school and sporting events and, and all sorts of things. And so, very, very popular. And in 1923, 1924, the Daughters of the American Revolution um, and the American Legion got together at uh, the U.S. Flag Conference and said, let's change this flag or this pledge. And so Mr. Bellamy was still alive at the time and they contacted him and he supported the change. And what they proposed was changing or taking out the words, my flag, and putting in the flag of the United States of America. And their reasoning was, is that if you pledge allegiance to my flag, that could be any flag. And they just wanted it to be more specific to the flag of the United States of America. And Mr. Bellamy uh, fully supported that because in his mind and in his heart, when he says, I pledge allegiance to my flag, the only flag he was, would have pledged allegiance to was the flag of the United States of America. So in 1923, 1924, that change was adopted, and the pledge was then, instead of my flag, it was to the flag of the United States of America. The second change came in 1954. The Knights of Columbus uh, proposed a second change, and they wanted to add the words under God. And part of the reasoning behind this proposed change was because of the Cold War. Uh, usually I have to go into some of the specifics of the Cold War with the students in schools and so that they have a better understanding. I don't figure I need to do that with any of you folks. So, uh, but a big difference between the United States, of course, and a communist country like Russia was freedom of religion. And so they wanted to make sure that as Americans said the pledge, it reminded them of our freedom of religion and, and our, uh, the ability to worship whatever uh, God you want to and you have that freedom to or not um, and so President Eisenhower at the time supported that change uh, because he said it made it not only a patriotic oath but public prayer and so at that time as you can imagine that was a very important change so in 1954 we have the pledge as we uh, say it today now you guys did a great job when you said the pledge for some reason though there are um, lots of Americans who want to add a comma after one nation. If you, a lot of, a lot of times they will say, uh, the public for which it stands, one nation under God. You folks did it correctly. There is no comma there, as you can see. It should be one nation under God. Okay? So if you uh, can help me educate those out there in the public when you hear somebody say the pledge, with a comma in there, educate them. Tell them there's no comma. It's just one nation under God. Good. Okay? That's true. So this is where I, I try and uh, educate the kids in the schools about the meaning of the pledge. Uh, if you start to break it down and you look at the words that Mr. Bellamy used, he used the words republic. And republic means the nation. And who... Who build or who creates or not creates? I'm sorry. Who who makes up our nation? It's the people. It's the kids in the classroom. It's you folks. It's all of our families in Nampa and Idaho, all across our country. It's the people who make up a nation. And so when we say, "I pledge," and a pledge is a promise, and allegiance means to be true, we are promising to be true to ourselves and the people around us who make up this great nation. And so I try and get them to understand that we need to uh, live our lives every day, day in and day out, uh, in a true way, being honest to ourselves and those people around us. And if we all hold on to that ideal, we will have a better place to live. You probably won't need guys like me in uniform, right? Um, I pledge allegiance to the Republic Okay? And it's the nation. It's the nation. The people make up that nation. So it's not just words. He's really, he really thought this out. Uh, the one nation concept that the Civil War fought to prove. And 
uh, words like indivisible. We cannot be divided. We have to stay together so that we can all hold on to those freedoms that you guys have fought to help preserve. Okay. So it's the, not just simple words that Mr. Bellamy was talking about. He actually thought this out, and those words actually mean something. And that's what we try and get the kids to, to understand. Uh, a lot of those words come from the Declaration of Independence, as you can see, the Constitution, obviously, they're drawing ideas from, from the Civil War, and what Mr. Lincoln was trying to, to uh, uh, hold together. So that's the Pledge of Allegiance, very quickly. So that brings us into the history of the American flag. Uh, the American flag, a lot of people think that this uh, Betsy Ross flag was the first American flag, in which it, it never was an official American flag. The first American, official American flag was created on June 14, 1777, the, uh, uh, over by the First Continental Congress. And that's, of course, why June 14th is, is Flag Day. Uh, I have never, I haven't in my research found an original first American flag, but from what I can tell, this is, would be as close as designed to the first American flag uh, based on what I've read and, and, and that sort of thing. This would be as close to the design as I could get, okay? Uh, the Betsy Ross flag is certainly the, the most popular American flag in our history, but yet still not an, an official flag. But the uh, 13 stripes, alternating red and white, represent the 13 original colonies. Of course, the Union uh, had 13 stars, 13 white stars on the blue field, and they represented uh, each of the original 13 states. The second Flag Act came in 1794 when Vermont and Kentucky were added to uh, the Union. At that point, they made a new design of the flag. Uh, it makes sense that they would add two stars, but did you also recognize they added two stripes? So the 1794 flag has 15 stripes and 15 stars. I don't, I still have not figured out exactly why they added two stripes, um, but they did. And that flag uh, stayed in place until 1818. And if uh, you all recall that little thing called the War of 1812 and Francis Scott Key's out in Baltimore Harbor and uh, Fort McHenry's getting bombed and he looks over and he sees the flag and he writes down this poem, that's the flag he was looking at. It was a 15 star, 15 stripe flag. So that Star Spangled Banner is a 15 stripe flag. Okay? It wasn't until uh, 1818 that we had a new flag act, and at that point, they went back to the original 13 stripes for the 13 colonies, and they said they would add a new star to the flag, to the Union, the very next 4th of July after a state was brought into the Union. Okay, so for, if we look at Idaho, Idaho was brought into the Union on July 3rd, 1890, the very next day, by, U.S. flag standards, we would have a new American flag. It didn't have to go through a flag act uh, through Congress. It was just oh, it, by this act of 1818. Anytime we added state, we just added a new star and left the 13 stripes as they were. Okay. 1912, we have the next flag act. This flag act set in standard the proportions of the flag. The proportions had to be the same, whether it's a small little flag uh, patch on, on a uniform or this big flag here or Simplot's flag. They all had to be the same proportion. Also, the arrangement of the stars had to be the same. And from that day forward to 1912, if we add a new state, they, have, they hold a national contest where people can d submit designs for the stars and then one design is chosen, and that is the standard for that flag act from that day forward until, until a new flag is designed. This is uh, uh, obviously a very recognizable picture to you folks. Even our kids in schools recognize this picture. Uh, it was, if not still, the most reproduced photo in history. And so in my classes, 
particularly in the high schools, I would uh, use this photo. And uh, Mr. Anderson here uh, just reminded me that uh, they think that uh, the six names uh, or the six individuals in this photo were misrepresented, at least one of them, uh, very recently. But what I did is I put the six names of the flag bearers on the screen. And I would tell the high school kids that if they remembered even just one name, commit it to memory, put it in their memory bank up here. If they would do that, and I pulled them over for a traffic violation, <laughs> and they can recite one of those names, <laughs> As long as they haven't uh, run somebody over or done, so, done something really bad, if it was just a simple infraction, and they can recite one of those names, I would let them go in the room. No age limit. You guys are good. Yeah. Good. Now, you got to understand, it's got to be me, right? If it's, if it's Officer Jones or something, and you start spouting off these names, he's going to look at you and maybe take you to the hospital. Okay? So, you, you got to be careful. Make sure you know that it's me. Uh, and I, and I did this because, and I would tell them that our veterans deserve to be remembered. And this was my way of trying to get them to remember at least one person, maybe more. And I would ask them to go home and instead of getting on the computer to play an internet game or something like that. I would ask them to go and put that person's name on the computer and read about them and learn about them. And then, with the hopes that that was, that was one person that will never be forgotten. And hopefully that's a representation of all of you. Uh, and maybe that leads them to somebody else, their, their, their family members or something, and spurs that interest to, so that you folks and your, your deeds and your heroics here in the home front and all across this world will not be forgotten. And I will tell you, uh, this has been a pretty cool thing because uh, I was at the Nampa High School graduation this last spring, just a month or so ago, and I ran into a former student who graduated, um, I think it was about 11 years ago, and he came up to me and he gave me John Bradley's name. That was pretty cool. That made my day, made my night, made my week, that that, that stuck with him all that time. Uh, yeah, of course, Mr. Anderson here, every time I see him, he leans in and he gives me those names just in case I, I uh, need some help giving him the warning if I ever stop. So I think he's in good shape. So when the American flag was originally created, the colors of the flag had no significance. It wasn't until 17, 1782 that the presidential seal was created and the colors of the presidential seal actually had some meaning or significance. So they just took the red, white, the meaning of the red, white, and blue from the presidential seal and attached that to the flag. Red represents hardiness and valor. White, purity and innocence. And this is kind of a neat picture I'll share with you. Uh, this is one of J.R. Simplot's flags. If you've ever driven up near Bogus and, and you see that big flag waving uh, before Mr. Simplot passed away, um, I was friends with uh, one of his employees and I collect American flags and so I said to her one time, hey, if you happen to cross paths with Mr. Simplot in the elevator, could you get him to, you know, send me one of his big flags? Well, I don't know how much time had passed, but one day I get a knock on the door and here's my friend and her daughter carrying this flag and it's one of his flags and it's 50 feet long by 30 feet wide, each star is a foot from point to point. And so I drag this thing around with me, We've, uh, and I, I use it in presentations, and if we have time, we get all the kids out on the football field or wherever, and we, we take a picture. And so that's what, what this is. And, um, and then the fun part comes after that is we get to fold that thing up. <laughs> so, and it, it takes just about all of these kids to get that thing folded up into a good triangle. So, but it, it's something that I, I cherish and, and take with me. Now, what does that flag weigh? Yeah. He, uh, the question is, what does the flag weigh? And I haven't, I should weigh it, but it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's heavy. Yeah. And, and especially when you start doing each fold and you start getting towards the end, uh, it, it's hard to get that. 
Right. Fold it over and tuck in. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty heavy. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'll, I'll figure that out and let you know. Uh, blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The blue is the color of the chief or the president. The star is a symbol of the heavens, and the stripes are rays of light emanating from the sun. And so the, our founding fathers really used or used symbols that were important to them, and they brought them down and they put them on the flag. Uh, as we talked about with adding the two words under God to the, to the Pledge of Allegiance, religion was, and freedom of religion was a key component for, um, you know, the revolution and looking for uh, independence from England. And so uh, they, they took those symbols and brought it down. And, and rays of light, what gives life, what gives life to uh, planet Earth? It's the sun. We can't live without it. And I think in my mind, those founding fathers recognized how important this great country was going to be. Even in the short term, they knew how important it was going to be. And in reality, they were right. I mean, without the United States of America, this planet would be in great turmoil. And we would be in a lot of trouble. We provide safety and security for the whole world, not just of our, for ourselves. And so I think they recognized that and used that as a symbol for that, that great uh, flag. So that wraps up my presentation. Uh, like I said, I usually take a lot longer. We do some different activities, uh, bring in guest speakers uh, to help show the importance of, of the flag and, and saying the pledge. And, and, and I know that uh, I've spoken with, with many students over the years that uh, uh, have learned from it and, and said that they uh, have used that. And now they do say the Pledge of Allegiance because something they feel good about rather than something that somebody made them do because you know the teacher says to do it or something like that so uh, again thank you for your time it's a great honor to be here in front of you folks uh, uh, I can't tell you the, the tremendous friendships that I've been lucky enough to form with, with many of you uh, and I cherish those and we'll hold on to those forever so thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day